On this particular Friday evening, Smith was on his way home from work. It was a usual Friday evening. It was just beginning to get dark outside, and the sun was spreading a warm golden tint over the busy streets of the city. Smith, a gentle and compassion-filled individual who had a soft spot for animals, was looking forward to a peaceful weekend by himself. While he was driving along the road that was known to him and went to his neighborhood, his thoughts strayed to the plans that he had for the many days that were to follow. His voyage back home was about to take an unexpected and emotional turn. But he had no idea that it was about to happen. Smith became aware of a minor disturbance in the direction of a crossroads as he approached it. The speed of the vehicles was decreasing, and some of the drivers were even blowing their horns. Because he was curious about what was going on, he parked his vehicle on the shoulder of the road and stepped out to investigate. Not much time passed before he was able to identify the source of the disturbance. In the midst of the bustling street, there was a puppy that was standing still, and next to it, there was a white dog that was barking in a protective manner. When Smith became aware of the gravity of the situation, his heart sunk to its lowest point. Max, the white dog, was zealously guarding his fallen buddy, preventing anyone from going close to him or her. There was a crowd of people gathered around, some of whom were attempting to assist the unhappy animal but were confused of how to approach it. A number of individuals were shouting recommendations while others were merely observing in anxiety. The situation was a tumultuous one. Smith made his way through the mob in order to assess the situation for himself. He was determined to assist. It appeared as though the puppy, who was later given the name Adam, had been struck by a car and was laying in a vulnerable posture in the center of the road near the intersection. Max was barking and growling at anyone who ventured too close to Adam despite the fact that he was misunderstanding the intentions of the people who were trying to rescue him. Smith was aware that he needed to take prompt action in order to protect the injured puppy from suffering any additional injury. He approached Max in a measured manner while speaking in a voice that was calming and quiet. Hey there, buddy, he mumbled, I'm here to come and assist you. Although I am aware of your fear, it is imperative that we get your companion to a secure place. Max remained on high alert despite Smith's efforts. His eyes filled with a mixture of dread and resolve. Smith's efforts were unsuccessful. After coming to the conclusion that he could not handle this situation on his own, Smith took out his phone and dialed the number of his close buddy Tom, who lived in the neighborhood. He detailed the circumstances and made a request for assistance. Tom gave his word that he would be over right away, bringing a container that they could use to transport the injured dog. While they waited for Tom, Smith and the other people who were watching came up with ideas to calm Max down. Although they attempted to entice Max by providing him sweets and making loving gestures, Max's commitment to Adam remained firm. They needed to find a means to relocate Adam without further disturbing Max. And it was obvious that they needed to do so. Following Tom's arrival, the two pals meticulously devised a strategy for the future. Smith carefully nudged Adam towards the side of the road while simultaneously speaking to Max in a soothing manner. He did this by providing Adam with a tree branch, while Tom was standing ready with the crate. He was getting ready to take action as soon as Adam came within reach. In the end, their combined efforts were successful. When they were able to successfully place Adam inside the crate without causing Max an excessive amount of distress, Smith and Tom carefully lifted the crate and took it to the side of the road after ensuring that Adam was securely contained within it. It was impossible for Max to take his eyes off of his injured pal when he followed closely behind. Although the bystanders let out a collective sigh of relief, they continued to be concerned for Max's well-being during this time. Adam was going to be examined properly. Therefore, Smith and Tom made the decision to take him to an animal clinic in the area. Max refused to be parted from his pal and moved along with the car as they traveled. He trotted alongside the vehicle. The bond that existed between the two dogs was undeniable, and it had a profound effect on Smith. In spite of the fact that the vets at the clinic did everything in their power to help Adam, it became immediately apparent that the injuries were too severe. It was impossible to rescue Adam's life because he had already passed away. As if he was aware of the significance of the situation, 
Max remained in close proximity, in order to provide Max with a tranquil setting in which he could say his final goodbyes. They made the decision to bury Adam in a local burial site. When they laid Adam to rest, Smith reminisced on the love and commitment that Max had shown to them throughout their relationship. He came to the realization that every dog, regardless of whether it was a stray or not, deserved to be treated with respect and kindness. After returning the following day, Smith and Tom went back to check on Max. Unwavering in his commitment, they discovered him still in the vicinity of Adam's burial location. The moment was both emotionally devastating and emotionally moving. He appeared to be grieving the loss of his comrade, Max. When he sat quietly with his head bowed, Smith got down on his knees next to Max and lovingly stroked his fur. Smith said, hey, buddy, into the ear, get you to a secure location as soon as possible. Adam wouldn't want you to be out here by yourself, would he? Smith was the subject of Max's gaze, and his eyes were filled with a mixture of trust and grief. It was clear to Smith that Max's look conveyed both intelligence and a profound range of feelings. In addition to being able to follow straightforward instructions, it was evident that Max was also capable of understanding love, grief, and loyalty. Max was coaxed into the car by Smith and Tom, who were adamant about providing him all the care that he deserved. After a brief moment of hesitation, during which he cast a glance back at the burial site, Max eventually gave in and allowed himself to be escorted away. Smith reflected on the events that had transpired over the course of the previous day and the lessons that he had acquired when they traveled back to Smith's residence. By the time Smith arrived at his house, he had made certain that Max was at ease. The living room was transformed into a warm and inviting space for Max to sleep. Replete with a plush blanket and a few toys, although he was still suspicious, Max began to feel more comfortable in his new surroundings as he gingerly investigated the house. Smith was able to observe the shift in Max's mood when he reached the realization that he was secure. Smith did everything in his power to assist Max in adjusting to his new existence over the course of the following several days. He took Max to the veterinarian for a comprehensive examination, making certain that he was in good health and had received all of his immunizations. In spite of the fact that Max had been living on the streets for a considerable amount of time, the veterinarian certified that he was, in fact, a stray. Spending time with Max, Smith took him on long walks and played with him in the backyard. This helped Smith form a stronger bond with Max. As time went on, Max became an integral component of Smith's everyday routine. They would sit together every evening, with Max putting his head on Smith's lap, and either watch television or simply take pleasure in the few moments of silence that they had together. Additionally, Smith made it a point to bring attention to the significance of providing care for stray animals. In the hopes of motivating others to take action, he posted the story of Max and Adam on various social media platforms. It didn't take long for the post to garner a lot of attention. With a lot of individuals expressing their support and sharing their own personal stories with animals who had been rescued. One day, Smith was contacted by a local animal rescue organization and received a message from them. The story of Max and Adam left an impression on them, and as a result, they desired to work together on a community outreach initiative that would assist other stray animals in the area. The idea that this would be a way to respect Adam's memory and make a good influence was one that Smith enthusiastically agreed to. Through their collaborative efforts, Smith and the rescue group were able to organize a number of activities, such as adoption drives, fundraising events, and instructional sessions on proper pet ownership. Max became the public face of the campaign, and his tale of steadfastness and resolve struck a chord with a great number of people. In the course of the weeks that went into months, Max flourished in his new residence. His coat was shining and healthy, and his eyes sparkled with excitement. He had gained weight, and his eyes glittered with joy. A lot of the time, Smith was thinking about Adam and the connection that he had with Max. Because of this, I was reminded of the profound connections that animals are capable of forming as well as the extent of their feelings. With the knowledge that he had made a positive impact on Max's life, Smith experienced a profound sense of satisfaction. 
He frequently reflected about the day that he discovered Adam and Max. And he came to the realization that it had profoundly altered the course of his own life. Through his friendship with Max, he had found a devoted companion. And he had also found a passion for assisting animals. While Smith and Max were sitting on the porch together one evening. Watching the sunset, Smith reflected on the journey that they had been on. Max, who was serenely resting by his side, was the subject of his gaze when he peered down. We've come a long way, haven't we, Max? Smith whispered the words, to give the impression that he was acknowledging the sentiment. Max raised his head and wiggled his tail. Despite experiencing a profound sense of calm, Smith grinned, although he was aware that Max would never stop missing Adam. He was also aware that the two of them had discovered a way to heal together. In addition to serving as a reminder to Smith of the significance of compassion in each and every life, their relationship was a demonstration of the enduring strength of love and loyalty. From that day on, Smith continued to campaign for animals, always carrying with him the memory of Adam and the lessons he had learned. Adam had been a significant motivation for Smith. Max, who was always faithful and kind, remained by his side throughout the ordeal, serving as a daily reminder of the positive outcomes that can result from even the most tragic of circumstances. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's story. See you next time. A dog was frozen in the snow, but what was under her belly helped her survive. In a small village in Ontario, Canada, a fierce snowstorm concealed an act of love and bravery that transcended species. When a woman discovered the frozen dog in the snow, she soon realized there was more to the story than met the eye. The story takes place in Ontario, Canada, in a quiet village where people led simple and peaceful lives. That year, winter arrived harshly, and the snow covered everything like a relentless white blanket. Despite the challenges brought by the climate, kindness and love continued to shine in the hearts of its residents. The main character of our story is a dog named Dona, a homeless German shepherd roaming the streets in search of food and shelter. Dona had been abandoned by her previous owner and was forced to survive on her own in this harsh world. Despite all the difficulties, she held on to the hope of finding a loving home with a family that would truly care for her. She was friendly to all passers, by in the hope of finding that special someone. One night, as Dona searched for shelter from the cold snowstorm, she heard faint meowing from a nearby bush. Intrigued by the sound, she discovered five tiny kittens completely abandoned by their mother. It was a mystery, but the fact remained that the kittens were shivering from cold and hunger. Despite being of different species, Dona felt an inexplicable and undeniable connection with these vulnerable little ones. It was as if her maternal instincts suddenly awakened, compelling her to protect these small creatures who desperately needed her. Whether they were kittens or puppies didn't matter. This dog knew they were living beings in distress, and her heart wouldn't allow her to turn away from them as others had done to her. With great effort and courage, the German Shepherd dragged her tired body towards the kittens, battling the raging snowstorm and icy wind. Her paws sank into the snow, and her muscles screamed in pain. Once she reached them, she covered the kittens using her large, fluffy body as a shield against the merciless cold. Despite her own weakened state and her body trembling from the cold, Dona refused to move, determined to keep the kittens warm even at the cost of her own life. Amidst the chaos and despair of the storm, Dona displayed an act of love and self-sacrifice that transcended species boundaries. Throughout the night, the brave dog sheltered the kittens, ready to sacrifice her comfort and well-being to save their lives. The next morning Leela, a kind 35-year-old woman, woke up early as usual to prepare for another workday at her local grocery store. Although she was accustomed to cold mornings, this one felt even more icy and challenging than the previous ones. Nonetheless, as hard-working as she was, this woman wasn't about to let that stop her. She dressed warmly and, after ensuring her scarf, gloves and boots were securely in place, she stepped out into the cold day. As she walked down the snowy road, snowflakes began to fall around her again. Despite the cold, 
The woman couldn't help but admire the beauty of the surrounding world. It was then that she noticed something unusual, a dog in the snow that seemed out of place in this perfect landscape. With each step, her heart beat faster, filled with concern about what she might find. When Leela reached the spot, she discovered Dona, frozen and trembling. But the amazing part was what lay beneath her. As Leela got closer, she recognized that the strange mound under Dona was actually five kittens. This sight moved Lila deeply. In Dona's eyes, she saw the love and determination that drove the dog to protect these tiny creatures despite her own suffering. In that moment, Layla felt an instant connection with the brave dog who had risked her life for others. She couldn't hold back her tears at the sight of Dona and the kittens, overwhelmed by emotions and sadness for their condition. However, Layla knew she couldn't leave them there and needed to act quickly if she wanted to save the dog and her kittens. Determined, she grabbed her phone and called the animal rescue service, ready to do everything in her power to ensure the well-being of these animals that had captured her heart. Rescuers arrived promptly, taking Dona and the kittens to a shelter for medical care and attention. Despite her exhaustion, the German Shepherd never let the kittens out of her sight, constantly checking on their well-being and making sure they were comfortable. The shelter staff were amazed by what the dog had done for the kittens, almost as if she were their real mother. Inspired by her actions, they began sharing her incredible story on social media. The tale of how Dona saved the kittens quickly spread throughout the community, touching the hearts of many with the love and bravery the dog had shown on that cold night. Meanwhile, at the shelter, the staff worked tirelessly to ensure the animals were healthy and happy. All, though Leela couldn't adopt them because she lived in a very small apartment, she visited every day after work to check on the dog and her adopted children, making sure they were all right until they found a home. Day by day, the kittens began to recover, gaining strength and energy, under the watchful eye of their new caring mother and the shelter staff. Dona herself also regained her health and her coat started to shine again. All, though no adopters had come forward yet, the shelter staff remained hopeful that they would find a loving home for them. Soon, the story of Dona and the kittens reached a family living outside the village. They were touched by Dona's kindness and selflessness and decided to visit the shelter to meet the brave dog and her little charges. When the family arrived, they were captivated by Dona's gentle nature and the kitten's playful demeanor. Moved by the special bond that had formed between them, they made a life-changing decision to adopt Dona and all the kittens. They knew it would be a big responsibility, but they also understood that this was their chance to give these animals a loving home and a new beginning. It was bittersweet for the shelter staff to see them go, but they knew it was the best thing they could do. Finally, the German Shepherd Dona would have the life she so long deserved. The kittens were taken to their new home where they were welcomed with open arms and loving care. The family provided them with a warm and safe place to live. This new family made up of the German Shepherd and her five kittens quickly adapted to their new life. Dona continued to care for the kittens as if they were her own, teaching them to play and explore their surroundings. Over time, the kittens grew into beautiful, healthy adult cats. Although each developed their own unique personality, they all shared an unbreakable bond with the dog who had saved their lives. Dona, in turn, found the love and security she had lacked for so long in her new family. The story of Dona and the kittens became a legend in the Ontario village, a touching testament to the power of love and compassion in difficult times. Her story also inspired others to open their hearts and homes to animals in need, raising awareness about the importance of adoption and animal care. Thus, in a small corner of Canada, Dona and her feline family lived happily surrounded by love, always remembering the cold night when a stray dog and five tiny kittens found the warmth of love and hope. This was the story of the day. We hope you enjoyed it. Now it's your turn to answer these questions and join the discussion. What did you learn from this story? Did you like what Dona did for the abandoned kittens? Do you know other stories where love crosses species boundaries? Share your thoughts in the comments. And then we will bring you an another touching story. Let's continue.
At a quiet funeral, unexpected commotion unfolds when a loyal dog, Max, begins to bark furiously at the coffin, this act prompts the priest to open the coffin, setting off a chain of revelations that no one anticipated, as the priest delivered a comforting sermon about the deceased, the sudden appearance of the dog startled the mourners, early in the morning, the dog had rushed to the coffin, its barking interrupting the solemn moment, Max's tail wagged with persistence, this dog, Max, who caused the disturbance, was not just any dog, but the faithful companion of the late Jonathan Hargrove, Jonathan, a revered figure in the community for his philanthropy and kindness, had amassed considerable wealth during his life, his passing had sent waves of grief throughout the town, Max was known for his unwavering loyalty, being Jonathan's shadow, accompanying him everywhere from events to quiet evenings at home. Their bond was undeniable, and for those who knew Jonathan well, it was no surprise that Max felt his absence so deeply, the backstory of Max, as recounted by Jonathan during his lifetime, was one of heroism and loyalty, a former rescue dog, Max had played a crucial role in saving many lives after natural disasters, their paths crossed after a devastating earthquake when Jonathan, trapped under the rubble of a collapsed building, was rescued thanks to Max's tireless determination. This act of bravery not only forged an unbreakable bond between man and dog but also inspired Jonathan to adopt Max, providing him with a home filled with unconditional love and companionship, however, the intensity of Max's reaction at the coffin suggested something more than just anxiety over separation, amidst the murmurs and shifting glances, Jonathan's relatives made their first attempt to calm Max, hoping to restore the solemn atmosphere of the funeral, can someone look after this dog? Whispered Aunt Marie, her voice tinged with irritation and a hint of fear, her request, though softly spoken, echoed through the family, none of whom seemed eager to approach the increasingly agitated animal, it was Elizabeth, Jonathan's niece, who had always shared a special bond with Max, who finally stepped forward, it's alright, Max, she soothed in a calm and firm voice, but Max's distress only seemed to grow, his barking reverberating like a sharp warning, Causing the mourners to cast worried glances his way, Elizabeth persisted, kneeling beside him, what's wrong, boy, you're scaring everyone, but Max's behavior puzzled her, it was as if he was urgently trying to convey something, an uncle, ever the skeptic, grumbled, this animal just craves attention, it's probably not as grieving as we are, however, their efforts seemed to only exacerbate Max's barking at the coffin, making it even more fervent. It was clear that Max was acting not out of a mere need for attention but something far more pressing, at the quiet funeral, a sudden disturbance unfolds as the loyal dog Max begins to bark furiously at the coffin, his actions suggest more than just grief or confusion, it indicates an urgent need to communicate something significant, this realization starts to sow seeds of discomfort and suspicion among those present. Especially the relatives already on edge due to the implications of Jonathan Hargrove's death on the inheritance and distribution of his wealth, I've had enough of this, Uncle James declared irritably, firmly deciding to improvise by using his belt as a muzzle and tightly securing it around Max's snout, hoping to silence the disruption of the funeral, Max's eyes, wide with anxiety, followed every move, but his protests were muffled, finding this insufficient. Uncle James then led Max to his car nearby and locked him inside, he'll calm down eventually, he asserted, hoping to shift the attention back to the funeral, the procession resumed, and the priest began recounting all of Jonathan's good deeds, unaware of what had transpired, James's daughter, Maria, went to her father's car in search of her gaming console, tasked with keeping the other restless children at a distance from the funeral to avoid any disruptions, when she opened the door. Max seized the opportunity and bolted out of confinement, still restrained by the makeshift muzzle, Maria's scream pierced the air, drawing the attention of the gathered mourners, what the heck, she exclaimed, stepping back as Max darted around, still hindered by the muzzle but visibly relieved to have escaped the car, Max desperately tried to remove the muzzle with his paws, observing the escalating situation. Father Martin hesitated for a moment, known for his wisdom and compassion. He couldn't ignore the level of distress exhibited by Max, Father Martin had conducted countless funerals in his lifetime but had never encountered such a peculiar situation, his sense of duty and curiosity prompted him to step beyond his traditional role, with a nod, 
He signaled to pause the procession, the crowd watched in silent anticipation as Father Martin approached Max cautiously but firmly, he understood that animals often perceive things beyond human comprehension. And if Max was indeed trying to convey a message, it was his duty to uncover it, kneeling beside Max, Father Martin gently calmed him and removed the makeshift muzzle, the tension in the air began to dissipate as Max relaxed under the priest's touch, taking a moment to connect with Max, Father Martin carefully examined the dog for clues, it was then that he noticed something unusual. Max's gaze seemed focused not on the coffin out of aggression or fear but rather pleading for attention to a specific part of it, intrigued, Father Martin decided that the only way to truly honor Jonathan Hargrove's memory and ensure peace was to investigate further, he announced his intention to take a closer look at the coffin, to the surprise of those present. The gathering at Jonathan Hargrove's graveside held their breath as Max persistently pawed at the base of the elegantly designed coffin, the priest gently reached out, ready to uncover whatever it was that Max so desperately wanted them to see, convinced by the dog's persistent behavior, the priest called for a thorough inspection, what they found hidden in the carved decorations at the base of the coffin was nothing short of astonishing, a secret compartment containing an envelope. Barely discernible with the inscription, to be read after my death, is this what Max was trying to tell us all along, whispered Elizabeth, her voice barely containing her amazement, the priest carefully extracted the envelope, his hands trembling slightly from the gravity of the moment, inside were two documents, an original will, markedly different from the one previously read, and a personal letter from Jonathan. At this point, Mr. Harold Jennings, Jonathan's longtime lawyer, addressed the gathered family with a serious expression, Jonathan anticipated this moment and discussed it with me in detail before his untimely death, he said solemnly, preparing the family for the revelations about to unfold, aware of the potential for conflict over his inheritance and concern for his own safety amid growing family disputes, Jonathan took a particularly cautious approach, he entrusted Mr. Jennings with keeping his true intention secret. During one of their confidential meetings, Jonathan handed over the envelope containing his original will and a personal letter detailing his deepest concerns and final wishes, he instructed Mr. Jennings that, should anything tragic happen to him, this envelope was to be safeguarded and included with his final resting place, Jonathan's instructions were clear. The documents were to be wrapped with his personal belongings, symbolizing his enduring presence and authority. And securely placed in a hidden compartment within his coffin, he added a special note about Max, his loyal dog, if there are suspicions about my death, trust Max, he will sense the need for action and know what to do. Jonathan had faith in the deep bond he shared with Max, whose instincts and training as a rescue dog made him uniquely attuned to his surroundings, Mr. Jennings honored his client's last wishes by ensuring the envelope was carefully wrapped in Jonathan's favorite scarf and placed in a specially designed compartment just before the coffin was sealed. This method guaranteed that the documents would remain undisclosed until the appropriate moment. Relying on Max's reaction to guide those left behind to uncover the truth, thus honoring Jonathan's legacy as he intended, this can't be, muttered an uncle, disbelief etched on his face, are we really supposed to believe that some secret will, discovered in such a dramatic fashion, should outweigh what we were led to believe was Jonathan's final testament, the words of Jonathan must not be taken lightly, the lawyer firmly interjected. The original will provide it for the distribution of Jonathan's assets in a manner significantly different from what the relatives had anticipated, instead of the equal division they were expecting an equal division of the inheritance, but the will revealed a meticulous selection of beneficiaries. Significant portions of the estate were allocated to various charitable organizations and causes dear to Jonathan's heart, moreover. A special clause entrusted the care and management of certain assets to specific individuals, including provisions for the lifelong care and well-being of Max, the most shocking revelation was the inclusion of a certain Mary Jackson as a major beneficiary, this disclosure ignited a cacophony of voices, each trying to outshout the other, accusations flew, and the relationships that once bound the family seemed to unravel under the pressure of the very documents meant to address them, Elizabeth. Trying to calm the growing storm, raised her voice, this isn't about the inheritance or the money, don't you see, Jonathan was afraid, he wanted to protect something more valuable than wealth, he wanted to safeguard his legacy, his beliefs, and perhaps even us from the worst parts of our nature, the lawyer nodded, 
his expression grave, Jonathan's foresight in protecting his final wishes reveals a man who, even after death, sought to guide his family towards unity and purpose. We must honor these wishes, regardless of our personal grievances, silence slowly descended upon the gathering as the weight of the situation sank in, the revelation not only exposed Jonathan's deepest fears and desires but also laid bare the true character of those he left behind, the resolution, though swift, was somber, confronted with Jonathan's irrefutable last will. The family had no choice but to gather with the lawyer in an official setting to understand and execute Jonathan's true intentions, Max remained by the grave, watching as they departed, his role in uncovering the truth acknowledged, his loyalty to Jonathan was as unwavering in death as it had been in life, at the subsequent meeting, it was revealed that the anonymous beneficiary in the will was Jonathan's long-lost sister, who had changed her last name to distance herself from the family. This revelation not only highlighted Jonathan's final wishes but also stirred up long-buried tensions among his biological siblings, shedding light on the complexities of family dynamics and hidden loyalties, the inclusion of an illegitimate daughter, born to a woman who had once been a servant in the family, further fueled the discord, the fact that Jonathan had recognized her in his will, to the detriment of his direct siblings, sparked a storm of accusations and repressed resentments. How dare he acknowledge her in his will and give her a portion of his estate, roared Uncle Paul, his face flushing with anger, it's unforgivable, Elizabeth, always the voice of reason, interjected, Jonathan did what he believed was right, isn't it time we acknowledged her existence instead of continuing this pretense of ignorance, the lawyer, who had been a silent observer, chose this moment to step in, perhaps it would be wise to consider Jonathan's intentions calmly, he suggested. He maintained a relationship with her throughout her childhood, funded her education, and even involved her in many of his business affairs, this carefully considered approach was essential for understanding the broader implications of Jonathan's will and addressing the simmering familial tensions that it had brought to the surface, all of this was done confidentially, undoubtedly to protect her from the prejudices she might face. His words, spoken in a calm and measured tone, hinted at Jonathan's depth of compassion and foresight, which his family had overlooked, Uncle James, unable to conceal his shock, exclaimed, but we disowned her, she was never part of this family, Jonathan clearly thought otherwise, the lawyer retorted, his stern gaze sweeping the room, he looked beyond the circumstances of her birth and valued her as an individual, reflecting his character and principles. As the family digested this revelation, the lawyer shifted focus to a more sinister aspect of Jonathan's letter, indicating that Jonathan feared for his life, there is reason to believe that Jonathan's untimely death might have been more than just an accident, he revealed, plunging the room into silence, he had suspicions that his life was in danger, possibly from within his own circle, the implication sent a chill through the hearts of everyone present, the gravity of the situation slowly sank in, triggering a storm of emotions. Accusatory glances were exchanged, and whispers filled the room as they considered the possibility that one among them harbored such malice, summoning her strength, Elizabeth addressed the gathering, Jonathan's death has revealed much about us, our prejudices, our weaknesses, and perhaps our capacity for reconciliation, we must honor his wishes by not allowing animosity to cloud our judgment, her words, filled with sincerity and conviction, resonated with some, who nodded in agreement. Moved by her wisdom, the room was electrified with tension as they called Mary Jackson, the long-lost sister, to inform her of Jonathan Hargrove's sudden death, Mary, unaware of Jonathan's passing, was stunned by the news and by the revelation that Jonathan had not only included her in his will but entrusted her with a substantial portion of his estate, reflecting on their last conversations, Mary shared, Jonathan always had a premonition about what might happen. He told me he felt in danger but never believed it would come to this, Jonathan's concerns centered around preserving the integrity of his legacy, at the heart of his worries was his younger sister, Lily, he confided in Mary about his suspicions regarding Lily's involvement in dubious activities that threatened to tarnish his name and the legacy he had worked so hard to build. He caught her red-handed in fraudulent dealings under the guise of the family estate, Mary recounted. Her voice tinged with sadness, but his love for her prevented him from taking drastic measures, Jonathan hoped to handle the matter quietly to protect the family from scandal and preserve Lily's dignity, the gathering fell silent, absorbing the weight of Mary's revelations, then Lily, who had been quietly observing until that moment, stood up, 
tears streaming down her cheeks, this should never have happened, she sobbed, breaking the heavy silence. Lily confessed that she had succumbed to outside influences and was enticed into actions she now deeply regretted, others were involved too, she added, revealing that the web of deceit extended beyond her own actions, they convinced me it was the only way to save us from financial ruin, I never wanted anything to happen to Jonathan, he was supposed to remain safe, Lily cried, her confession revealed a grim reality. Jonathan's death might not have been an accident but a well-calculated move by those looking to exploit the family's vulnerabilities, the thought that one of their own could be involved in such a monstrous conspiracy sent shockwaves through the family. A betrayal that deeply wounded the bonds meant to unite them, in the wake of Lily's startling admission, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, uncovering a conspiracy far more intricate than anyone had imagined, the mastermind behind the manipulations involving Lily and Jonathan's sudden death was none other than Uncle James, a key family figure and the guardian of the family's wealth. His actions painted a picture of betrayal that cut to the core of the Hartgrove legacy. Jonathan had known that his original will would upset some family members, so he created a new one to maintain peace, However, he secretly told his lawyer that his first will truly reflected his wishes and should come into effect at a critical moment, the conspiracy to prevent Jonathan from making any further changes to his will included tampering with his medical treatment, orchestrated by Uncle James. The intent was not to take Jonathan's life but to weaken him enough that he could no longer make legal alterations, this interference aimed to create a legal deadlock, cementing the will in its current state to benefit those manipulating it. The miscalculation led to Jonathan's untimely death, the revelation of this truth sent shockwaves through the family, exposing the extent to which greed and manipulation had eroded the fundamental values they once upheld, those responsible. Led by Uncle James, were arrested, bringing a semblance of justice to an otherwise devastated family, as the family grappled with the aftermath of these revelations, they honored Jonathan's true intentions and began to repair the damage done to the family's name, ultimately, it was Max, Jonathan's loyal companion, whose persistent actions laid the groundwork for uncovering the truth. His unwavering spirit reminded everyone of the profound impact one being can have on preserving a legacy. Illustrating that sometimes the guardians of heritage come in the most unexpected forms, that's today's story, after listening to the above two stories, do you have any thoughts, you can tell us in the comment area, if you like them, please subscribe and like them, see you next time. Thank you.